everyone. I'm Trish Smith, the Curator of Historic Architectural Resources at Trayton Hall, and today I want to talk to you about one of our most frequently asked questions, which is where are the slave cabins at Drayton Hall? Now before I dive into this topic, I want to pause briefly to say a bit about terminology um, and using the right terminology. So in the field of history, research is always ongoing. It can be a bit of a moving target, but I will say that um, we are now using the phrase slave houses instead of slave cabins. We find it to be um, more descriptive and appropriate for the kinds of dwellings that we're talking about. So for the rest of this video, I'll be saying slave houses, not slave cabins. So I'm actually coming to you from a slave house at Drayton Hall. Are you surprised? No, we did not open a new building here on the property. I am actually in a room in the cellar of the main house of Drayton Hall itself. And we believe that this room was a place that was inhabited by enslaved people. How do we know that? Well, one of the kinds of analysis that we do here that aids our research is paint analysis. And this is kind of a forensic technique where you take a scalpel and you take a tiny little sample from a surface. In this case, um, we have samples from the walls here. Uh, and when you do that, you make sure you get a little bit of the substrate. So in this case, substrate is plaster. In other rooms, it may be wood. It's basically the original surface on which you apply all of your subsequent paint layers. And so you take this teeny tiny sample and you put it under a microscope and it looks a little bit like a grilled cheese sandwich. Um, but what you're looking at is every layer of paint that's ever gone on in the history of this building. Um, and you're also looking at the evidence of human life in a space and the messes that we make intentionally or unintentionally. Um, so in this room, in between layers of whitewash, we found smoke particles with animal fat embedded in them, which is fascinating. Why is that so fascinating? Well, it tells us that people were cooking in this room, in that fireplace right over my shoulder. So to help orient you a little bit, over my left shoulder, so to your right, is the kind of big main room in the cellar. It has a massive fireplace in there, and that's where we believe most of the meals were being prepared for this household. But this paint analysis tells us that meals were also being prepared in this much smaller fireplace. And that's a really good indication that enslaved people were dwelling in this space and preparing their own meals, sleeping in this room, which tells us that this house is a slave house. Enslaved people lived in Drayton Hall. So who might these people have been? Well, for John's time, we don't know. There are very few records that survive from John's period of occupation here. Um, but for his son, Charles Drayton, we have a much better idea of who some of these people were. Charles kept great diaries, um, and so we can suppose that perhaps George, his butler, may have um, taken his meals and, and slept in this room, or George's daughter, Fanny, or perhaps Dumplin, the cook. Any of these people um, could have spent their time in this room. So when we have this conversation about Drayton Hall itself being a slave house, one question that comes up frequently is whether that might be somehow better than being in uh, a smaller, maybe draftier, um, less substantial, significantly less substantial slave house on a different part of the property. Um, and I cannot speak for those who dwelled in this space, but I imagine that having um, to live all of your hours under the same roof as your enslavers and uh, having no expectation of being able to lay your head down for even a few uninterrupted hours of sleep, um, for never really having a place where you could speak freely uh, without fear of reprise, um, is probably not a preferable situation. So these are just some things for you to consider the next time you are in Drayton Hall and admiring the big, beautiful rooms. Perhaps you can also remember that this house is 
Lane House.